Today we're using the Fellow Stag Dripper. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we are testing out a new brewer. It's been on the market for quite some time, but we haven't had the pleasure of using it up until now. We've been playing around with it, and it's the Fellow Stag Dripper that comes in a few different sizes, we should say. We're using the larger size here, because uh, we thought that was interesting. I'm sure we're gonna do a video where we try the small size as well at a different point. Now, a few just kind of observations before we start brewing. So we're using the dripper part. We're also using the server part. Um, the server part is a double insulated, basically glass server, which makes sense because it keeps things warm. Uh, the only issue with it is that anything that keeps coffee or is supposed to keep coffee warm for a longer time is also gonna allow that same coffee to oxidize. So basically be in contact with air, which makes it taste really like a batch brew. So we do not recommend keeping the brewed coffee in here for very long. We basically recommend brew it, pour it, drink it, more or less. Now, when it comes to the brewer itself, as you can see, it's quite tall. Um, probably meaning then that it's made to make larger brews, which makes sense. But one of the most interesting things when you look at it is the paper filter. Now the paper filter is really tall and quite big as it is with a really small surface area in the bottom. This is interesting for extraction, um, putting it similar to some brewers we have played around with here on the April channel before. Um, and we're interested in because of the surface area and because of the flow rate that comes with this shape of a brewer. However, when we look at the paper filter, what we're seeing is that we have a lot of coffee stuck in the kind of waves on the sides of the paper filter. And we're questioning whether that is really the best way to extract the coffee. So there is a few considerations before we start, um, but however, it's an interesting brewer and we're really happy to kind of share it. Um, so the recipe that we are using it's not the recommended recipe, as per usual. Uh, however, we advise you to try both. Now, we are basically pre-wet the filter. We're gonna pop that on top of the brewer. Another kind of interesting observation, which in our world makes a lot of sense, is that you have the opening of the server that is allowing a little bit of water to, or a little bit of air to come out. Uh, when you brew, which is basically alleviating a little bit of the pressure, which is gonna have your flow rate to be more stable. Because one of the observations early on is that whenever you have a brewer that is this narrow and this tall, you are gonna end up with a very fast flow rate initially because of the shape and because of the pressure that that is creating. However, with similar kind of brew formats like this, you're gonna end up with a brew that becomes very slow in the end of the brew. So you have a lot faster flow rate in the beginning which you normally always do, but this is considerably slower than in the end of the brew. So that's something that we take into consideration when creating the recipe. Now they have this smart little funnel that we're using to basically pop the coffee in. We're updosing a tiny bit from what we normally do. So let's say 13 grams of coffee in this case. We're brewing a natural process geisha from the Serra Azul farm in uh, Colombia. A part of the Esperanza group, a coffee that we featured in our limited groups, and hence down one of the best geishas we had in a very long time. Now the water, time, water temperature sits at 92 degrees Celsius, and to kind of stretch out this brew, keeping in mind that in the beginning of the brew, we're gonna have a very, very fast flow rate, and in the later part of the brew, we're gonna have a very slow flow rate. We're changing our pouring structure slightly. So we're gonna start with an initial pour of 50 grams of water, and that's done in a circle and a center pour. As you can see, you don't have much room to actually do a circle pour here, so we kinda of recommend going with the center pour more or less all the way. What this kind of, for us, smaller initial pour will generate is just a slightly slower flow rate in the beginning. And as we go up to 30 seconds, we're gonna pour up to 150 grams of water. So that's a 100 gram pour. And we basically do that in the center. 
And what we're doing then is that we're making sure that the middle part of the brew has a faster extraction as well, because this is when we're gonna be able to get the most out of the coffee. And it also leaves us with a smaller pour in the end of the brew, which is then not stalling at the flow rate too much, basically. Now, when it comes to grind size, we're actually growing quite a bit finer than what we're used to. Just again, because of the shape of the brewer and the pressure it generates, you end up with a very fast flow rate, uh, which is something then you have to kind of control. So we poured up to 200 grams and that was done within one minute and 20 seconds. And now we're kind of just waiting for that to go through. Um, fast flow rates are interesting. It's something that we feel has been discussed in the industry for quite some time. We have some really fast filters as well. Um, and here at April, we kind of end up in a situation where we don't understand why everyone wants to brew so fast. Uh, meaning that there's value that comes from a longer contact time, especially when we're looking at the kind of harmony and constellation between taste aspects in the coffee or flavors in the coffee and the tactility of the coffee, right? So it's not just about extracting certain flavors, it's also about matching those with the tactility that makes sense in the coffee. So here we're basically looking at a total brew time of 220, then basically all of the water has gone through more or less. We're ending up with quite a flat bottom, which is really nice, but again, we have coffee basically in the wave sides quite high up or as high up as we poured water basically, right? So one might argue that maybe pour a little bit less in each pour to kind of have that closer down. But in terms of what we're getting flavor wise, this is what we're the most happy with. So one of the things we should actually add about this brewer is that um, in regards to the brews that we have tried, we keep on having this slight kind of metallic taste to it which is something that we often find when it comes to these kind of metal brewers. So it is definitely worth considering when brewing very light roasted coffees. So as some form of conclusion here, what we're getting brew wise is kind of very light, juicy cups of coffee, which is great. They lack a little bit of structure. Um, and when I say structure, I don't mean strength because strength you can easily manipulate. Structure is again more of how the tactility hits your palate. And we find that probably because of the shape and the kind of fast brew time, almost regardless of grind size, you end up with this kind of one dimensional cup of coffee. So it's able to make a perfectly fine cup of coffee um, and I mean, of course, you can brew a bit higher volumes if you want to, but if you've been following us for a while, you know that we're not a big fan of doing big brews. We prefer smaller brews. Um, and again, a little bit of a side note, we know this server is double insulated. It keeps the heat, which is really good, but coffee that is brewed and sits for a long time doesn't taste good. That's why batch brew doesn't taste good as well, right? So in whatever way you brew, filter coffee, make sure you serve it directly, basically. Now, with that, as always, we wanna know what you guys think about this brewer. Have you used it? What's your main difference between the large and the small models? Uh, do you have any con consideration, any thoughts on that? Uh, we have actually, funnily enough, used the small one at some events we've done a few years back in, in Shanghai and brewed a lot of cups of coffee and we were quite happy with it back then. Um, it's a very consistent flow rate as well. Um, but again, we'd love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on it. Um, perhaps you have another flatbed brewer that you think is really interesting and you want to share. Um, and one kind of answer or one kind of question to follow would, would kind of be, does the paper filter have to have those waves? We're assuming it's a little bit of a production thing that is kind of forcing them to do this because it's difficult to do it otherwise. But I would love to see this brewer with a paper filter that didn't have the kind of massive waves that it currently does. Um, now with that, thank you guys for watching. It's always super nice. Look into Patreon if you wanna have the kind of more in-depth content um, and make sure to subscribe as well. So with that, thank you for watching and have a good day.
We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.